Hey guys, we are back with our second installment of our series EM is fun. Today we are going to talk about magnetic levitation. The idea is to focus on the working of a maglev train and how frictionless and efficient technologies are shaping the world we live in. Before moving on to maglev trains, let us first discuss ways in which levitation can be achieved. One method is a simple mechanical constraint. Also known as pseudo levitation, two magnets are constrained to move along an axis and arranged such that they repel each other strongly. Then one magnet will levitate over the other. Another way is direct diamagnetic levitation. Water, as we all know, is a diamagnetic substance and a diamagnetic repels a magnetic field. This technique is used to levitate water droplets. Animals such as frog, as shown, can also levitate. A method which uses the properties of superconductors is called the Meissner effect and it is used in the Japanese SC Shanghai maglev. When a superconductor is cooled below a critical temperature in the presence of an applied magnetic field, all interior magnetic fields are cancelled and exterior field increases. The superconductor shown here is yttrium based. Yet another method utilizes Lenz's law for repulsion. When a conductor is placed in a varying magnetic field, current is induced in the conductor which creates its own magnetic field that is responsible for the levitation. Servo mechanisms can also be used for levitation purposes. It uses a feedback loop which adjusts the electromagnets to change speed and position. In any case, sir, magnetic field is used to counteract gravity to achieve levitation. Magnetic levitation finds application in many domains. Some great emerging technologies are employing magnetic levitation due to its many advantages that we will discuss later. We live in an era where everyone wants to communicate and travel faster. Maglev is a new system of transportation that uses magnetic levitation to suspend, guide and propel trains for quick commute between places. Maglev trains generally levitate 1 to 10 cm above guideway. Maglev trains basically work on three principles, levitation, guidance and propulsion. There are certain types of levitation technologies which make transportation possible. In electromagnetic suspension technology, the electronically controlled electromagnet in the train attracts it to magnetically conducting track usually made of steel which levitates the train. Once the train levitates, power is supplied to coils along the guideway walls to create magnetic field that push and pull the train along guideway. The EMS technology used in Germany called Transrapid utilizes levitation and guidance separated suspension while Japanese uses integrated type. The suspension gap is about 10 mm. It is even able to levitate at zero or low speed. Electrodynamic suspension uses repulsive force for the levitation. EDS uses superconducting magnets which create a magnetic field that induces currents in nearby conductors when there is relative motion. This induced current causes formation of poles in inducing coils which repel the superconducting magnets causing the required lift. The air gap is around 100 mm. It is highly suitable for high speed operation and carrying large loads. The trains need a certain speed before they can levitate of around 100 km per hour. Now we have seen how maglevs levitate and propagate. But how do they break? The braking system utilizes the formation of eddy current. Eddy currents are developed as there is relative motion between the train and the magnets on the track due to Faraday's law of induction. By Lenz's law, the current will produce its own magnetic field that will oppose the applied field. Train experience a drag force due to this magnetic field and the force is proportional to velocity which makes the train slow down. Let us now look at what advantages the maglev trains can offer to us. The maglev trains do not contain any internal combustion engines. So there is no air pollution, so which means they are more environment friendly. The maglev trains incur low maintenance cost as there are no moving parts, so there is very less wear and tear. There is no physical contact between train and track, so which means we have done away with the friction and we can achieve speeds greater than 300 miles per hour. The maglev trains are weatherproof and they are quite safer. But as we say, every cloud has a silver lining. The maglev trains have the disadvantages too. There is a very high cost of initial setup. 
The infrastructure that we have to set up initially requires a large amount of money, which needs quite high investment. But as we can see that the advantages are far greater than the disadvantages. So I guess in the near future, we'll see maglev trains running in India too. What do you say Pankaj? <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs>